Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian, and you may have seen this before. We have talked about these before. This is an 1883 pattern German Reichsrevolver. This particular one was manufactured at the Erfurt factory in 1894, so it is a very old firearm. Um, I've done videos on these before. Uh, you may have also seen the CN Arsenal video on the Reichsrevolver with Othias and May. But until now, I've never actually had the chance to shoot one. So I now have an 1883 pattern here that I can use, and I have a box full of ammo, and I am curious to see what these actually shoot like. So a little bit of background info, in case you don't want to sit through all the other material out there. Uh, the Germans adopted this revolver in slightly less modern form in 1879, updated it in 1883, and it would serve as the standard German military sidearm until the adoption of the Luger in 1908. Uh, and what's interesting about this is that it is a just massively obsolete revolver. It's single action only. It actually has a manual safety on it, which only functions if the hammer is down. And then all the safety does is prevent you from cocking the hammer. So the safety is basically useless. Um, this was made for durability and reliability on top of all other considerations. So the trigger pull sucks. The uh, the force required to cock the hammer is substantial, and it sucks. The sights pretty much suck. The handling kind of sucks. Really, what this has going for it is it's like the Toyota Hilux of revolvers. It presumably just won't ever break, which is kind of substantiated by the fact that I've got an 1894 one here that is entirely brown and devoid of finish, and presumably it's still going to work for me. Now, these fired the 10.6 or 10.55 millimeter German Ordnance cartridge, which is basically equivalent to the uh, 455 Webley. It's about a 250 or 260 grain bullet, moving at about 650 feet per second. So definitely a member of the heavy and slow school of thought of uh, revolver ammunition or handgun ammunition in general. Uh, these were originally black powder. Um, in fact, this ammo is black powder as well. And uh, that pretty much covers it. It's a six shot gun, does not, oh, the one thing I left out, has no ejector. So you have to use a, uh, a separate manual ejector, which is basically technical speak for a stick. And I brought a little plastic punch with me to do that job. Um, it just, wow, fantastically underthought revolver. It does have recessed chambers, which is nice. Um, I've got it at half cock right now. I'm only gonna load five in this thing because well, I guess I'm shooting all six. I don't know that I would carry this uh, with a round under the hammer. All right, got five there. Close our loading gate, and then it is single action only. Remember, this is 1879 and 1883 are the two, the two dates, adoption dates on these guns. Six years before this, the American Army adopted a much better single action revolver. Um, in 1873, the French army adopted a double action revolver that's quite good. Um, there's really no good reason for them to have left out all the useful bits on this gun and gone with something as bare bones and primitive as this is. But let's see how it handles. Nice old black powder smoke cloud there. This actually has some kick to it. Um, that big bullet, it may be going slow, but that's going to have some heft to it. You don't want to get hit by this. All right, now that I've finished firing all the rounds in the cylinder to unload, I'm going to pop the loading gate open, put the hammer at half cock. That allows it to spin freely, although only in one direction. And then I need my manual ejection rod. So I've got this little plastic punch. That one's kind of tight. Oh, there we go. Just didn't have it lined up quite right. That's the empty one I left. There we go. Now, to reload it, I just leave it like this, and then I can load. Now, I mentioned that this has recessed chambers. What I mean by that is the rim of the cartridge is sunk down into the face of the chamber. And that's a good thing for safety, which kind of is what this revolver has going for it. So 
because that's nice and deep, if you did have a failure in the case, uh, it's not going to vent out. It's going to be contained by the cylinder. All right, since I'm shooting this right now, I will go ahead and load all six. There we go. You'll notice that these case heads are marked 44 uh, Remington Magnum. That is uh, what you can make the brass out of, should you be so inclined. There's your sight picture. Not much of one, but... All right, I want to see if I can actually hit anything with this. No, pretty much not. Shoots substantially high for me at about 50 yards. Heavy trigger certainly doesn't help that. But, you know what? Up close, this thing would get the job done. Um, I kind of anticipated that this would be another wimpy, you know, late 1800s European revolver cartridge, like so many of them were. Pretty much everyone except the Americans, the Brits, and the Germans. You know what? This thing's got some substantial recoil to it. It's got some heft to it. As long as you only need six rounds, and you're okay with manually cocking the hammer and not having double action, this actually isn't as bad as I thought. Um, I'd regulate the sights a little bit better, but that may be a function of the the, the more modern hand-loaded ammunition that I'm using, which isn't, of course, German Army standard, because none of that exists anymore, except in very rare collector circles. Oh. There you go, guys. German 1883 Reichs revolver, one of those cool revolvers that does, in fact, have a manual safety on it. Uh, if you enjoy this sort of content, please do consider checking out my Patreon page. It's the uh, support from folks there that makes it possible for me to go out and get stuff like 10.6 millimeter German, German ordnance ammunition to share with you guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Tune in again to ForgottenWeapons.com.